sucks again The tides are loose and somewhat bright But the fetching news will have to wait with a photograph, uh, a JPEG image. So first thing you want to do is open up Inkscape. We're going to import a bitmap, either doing File, Import, or what I'm going to do is just drag it here from my desktop. Let's see, it's quite big. So I'll resize a little bit. Now once I have that selected, what I'm going to do is say Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. So we've converted that into a pattern. I can now delete it. I'm going to create a rectangle and I'll bring up the um, fill and stroke dialog and what I'm going to do here instead of having a flat color first of all make sure that there's no outline, no stroke on the object and then under fill I'm going to change it to a pattern Okay, and you'll see that I get my pattern that we just created the bitmap. So what I'll do then is um, select that, make sure it's selected, select path and convert that rectangle to a path and what that lets me do is then if I double click it I get nodes that I can now stretch and manipulate. So what I'm going to do is actually create a kind of perspective look to the image Okay, it's nice to try and keep the sides vertical, but it doesn't have to be. You can do whatever you want to with the image. Um, I'm going to do something like this uh, here. You can see now it's kind of got a 3D look to it. And what I'm also going to do is, um, what, what you should also notice is I've cut off part of it. That's the part that's going to kind of pop out. All right. So what I'm going to do now is um, grab the curve tool and I'm going to just create a very simple shape that's going to encompass the part that I've cut. Okay. And make sure you get it all. But it can be a very simple shape. Close shape here. Select it. It's very hard to see because the outline is very thin, but it's, there's a shape there I just created. Hold shift, select the other one. Now we go path union and you can see that now that has become all one shape and it's got the rest of my bitmap. What I'm going to do now is probably the trickiest part and that is I'm going to double click it and I want to adjust these nodes to kind of match the shape of what I'm cutting. So the key thing is this node and this node I want them to carry on vertically so I grab them I hold control so that I can only go vertically and if you want you can zoom in and you get this node down to where you know it's going to meet and then you can come down to this part and bring this node vertically up to where it's going to meet my cutting now what I'm going to do is what you can do with it with the nodes like this is you can actually select between two nodes and get the path I'm going to create some extra nodes in here that I can use to kind of custom fit this shape. I'll just hit that a couple times. I'll select this path. Now you can see those two nodes are selected. Add a couple nodes. This path and add a couple nodes. And depending on how complex this is will determine how many nodes you're going to need. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit here. And it's this is about the most tedious part. Um, of this whole exercise. I'll try to do it quickly here for the screencast. 
to give you an idea of what I'm trying to do. And if you if you've run out of nodes and you you need more in order to accomplish what you're doing, you can always select that path and again add a couple more nodes in. Be careful not to grab select a bunch of them when you're moving them. Like I just did. We'll just kind of get this rough for our demonstration purposes, but you can fine tune it with as many nodes as you want. You can also do curved paths, um, which I'm, I'll stay away from for this exercise, just in, for the sake of time. And you can see there we've got it fairly close. You could zoom in and um, you know check that out, make sure we've got it you know dead on. But you can see where I'm going with this now. Her arm kind of sticks out of the picture. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another rectangle. Again, doesn't matter what color it is. But what I'm going to do is select that rectangle and I'm going to change the op opacity of it so I can see through it. And again, I'm going to convert it to a path. So I'll have it selected and select Object to Path so that I can double click it and now move the nodes where I want. And I'm going to kind of create the frame that I was, you know, the paper border of the photograph. You may have to zoom in and so you can see things a little better, make sure you're getting the effect that you want. This is probably a little bit rough, but you can get the idea of where I'm going with this. Okay, so now you've got your border. Hit F1 to select it. Now you can change that opacity right back up. Make sure the color's white or whatever color you want. Make sure the object's selected. Hit page down. It's now behind it, and you have your kind of 3D picture. You can also select that white background. You can, um, if I can get it selected here, and you can duplicate it, make it black, and add a little bit of blur, which you can see on the fill and stroke dialog box. And then you can, again, make sure it's selected, hit page down and put it behind, and then we get kind of a sh drop shadow effect as well. So that's it. Hopefully, uh, you know, you found that useful. You can do some kind of neat things with bitmap images as well in, uh, in English.